Okay, so now we've got all these controls in here, what we want to do is start to constrain things up. So, what we'll do here, and actually before we start constraining these, I'm going to make sure that these are in the appropriate groups. So, all these curves will want to be in the control objects group, and so we can go to the global move control objects and just minimize click and drag them in there and you'll notice I'm not selecting the display curves and the main reason these is these aren't actually going to be used as control objects so actually I'm going to change this to CG actually CD sorry for curve display So these are not going to be control objects. The animator isn't going to use these to animate. They don't control anything. They're just there to display something. So they're just displaying where that pole vector exists, where it where it's hiding, basically. So what we're going to do is just start constraining these up. So in the animation section, we've got constraint, and we're just going to click this bar at the top to rip this to the side. So for the IK, we can see rotating this IK isn't doing anything. And the reason for that is the IK has no control over the or orientation of this wrist. So for that reason, we don't really need to constrain the rotate. So I'm just going to select the control and make sure it's freezed transformations, its transforms are freezed. And that's really important before you start constraining. Because if you start freezing transformations before you after you constrain, you're going to get a lot of errors. Because basically, a constraint is if you parent something, it's inside it. it it's a, it's it's like you sitting in a car. You're parented to that car. That car's driving about. You move with the car. You're inside it. But a constraint is in the rig. This wrist control could be anywhere. It could be halfway around the world. A constraint is basically one thing telling another what to do so the animator will move this wrist control and this wrist control through a constraint will tell the IK where it should be so the way I think of it is basically it's like a, a, a walkie talkie, it's like a radio if I move this it's like if I move this um, 5 in Y basically the constraint basically radios information over and basically goes to the IK handle you need to move up 5 in Y so it's not parent to it it's not connected in any way it's just one control sending over information so and again that means if we froze transformations here and set them to zero it would transmit that information over it would be telling the IK handle it needs to move to zero so that's where you get errors when you're trying to freeze transformations after setting up constraints so the way we select it is we select the driver first and then the driven so what's going to be sending the information over what's going to be talking what's going to be transmitting that information and what's going to be the driver so what's going to take the command and then point so I'm going to go to the option box now we can uncheck main 10 offset if we want all that does is if this control was further off to the left and the IK was separated so the IK wasn't on top of this control if main 10 offset was unchecked the IK would snap to the pivot of this control curve but because we actually made this curve we vert snapped it to that joint we know that they're on top so leaving main 10 offset doesn't really matter at this point and constrain all axes so we want the X Y and Z and just hit apply and close and we can see in here with the IK it's turned blue now the colors are really important because they tell us what what this information is where it's getting this information from so it's things like red is keyframe data and blue is constraint data so just looking at this I can tell that the constraints worked and it's receiving its information so selecting this wrist control you can see now by moving this about it's relaying that information across, it's sending that information across to the IK 
and unlike parenting we can see that if I press F in the outliner this control curve is in the connection objects whereas the IK is in the IKs group so there's, there's no connection through parenting but the information is just getting relayed across and this is a much more in my opinion efficient way of rigging because if you if you parent an object there's no way you can key it to be unparented or parented you're either inside a group or you're not inside a group there's no way that you can keyframe it in or out I mean you might be able to use some mel expressions or commands but generally there's no way to there's no f it, it limits it straight away you, there's got no fluidity you can't unparent or reparent it it's just permanently parented so with a constraint it just means we can have them separated and later on as we'll explain with a few other things you can switch constraints on and off and do better things with them whereas if you just parent it it's set in stone you can't do anything else so I'll just go along to the other side do the same hit point and what I'm going to do now is select the pole vector curve shift select the IK and at the bottom we've got pole vector and just clicking that now again if we select the IK we can see this coordinate this pole vector X Y and Z has now got blue in it which means it's constrained again so if I just increase the bend in this arm we can now see that that arm is aiming towards that pole vector control so wherever we aim that so this is where the RP solver is a lot more flexible for the animator because all they need to do is bend the arm and just position that control and we'll do the same to the other side pull vector and in my opinion it, it's best to work on the left and right at the same time because in the past I've tried you know going all the way through some tracks to finish on the left arm and then repeat the process on the right arm but I just found doing them at the same time is a lot easier because if anything crops up like any errors happen you know before it happens to the right hand side so you can keep them consistent and in my my opinion if you're doing it at the same time if you do them at a separate time you might do the left one day and the right the other day and an error might happen to the right when the left's already been made and you might be scratching, scratching your head for a while why it's happened and you don't want any inconsistencies you want these to be this exactly the same so now everything's working but these display curves aren't moving about and because we created clusters on them, um, what we actually want to do, so we'll put these two curves inside their extra nodes, extra to show, so they're visible, and we're going to take these these clusters and we're actually going to constrain these clusters to the curves. So I'll select the curve, these, uh, select the cluster and I'm selecting it in the outliner because it's a lot easier to select than in the viewport so I select the curve, select the cluster and we're just going to hit point and we'll do the same with this joint select the joint, select the cluster point and the same again with the other side so now as we move these about you can see that this line in the middle is updating and you can see here that actually it's now templated and the reason for this is because this extra to show group if I go to the attribute editor and go to display and drawing overrides we can see here that enable, or enable overrides is checked and it's set to reference so this basically means any, anything inside this group is referenced so now we cannot select these curves so as the animator is animating they can see these curves and it, it shows them where the pole vector is hiding but they're not going to be able to select it or keyframe it which is what we want and we'll do the same in here so this extra to hide group the visibility is off 
So just by moving these into the extra to hide, we can see it's going to hide them. We don't need to see those clusters anymore. And this way of having them in groups is a lot easier because now if I do want to debug the rig, rig or edit the rig, I can just show the extra to hide and instantly we can see all the clusters. So I don't need to go into each cluster and set the visibility to on. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier about these uh, groups is you can see here, selecting the groups, they don't have any translate or rotate or scales. So the way we did this was it's like this temp group here. It's got all these um, different translates, rotates and scales, but we don't really want to do anything with them. The, for this character in the node, they're basically just a folder structure to contain objects in. We don't need to translate, rotate or key or animate any of this. So what we can do is if we select the group, click, left click and drag all the items we don't want and we can just right click, uh, lock and hide selected. So if we hit lock selected that just means that now this group is locked we cannot rotate this or move it. And then if we hide it just doesn't display them. So we lock and hide them so basically they, they can't move, they can't rotate and they're hidden because we don't need to see them. So now we've got all that working. It's looking quite good. So in the next lesson we're going to go through how to set up the FK for these arms.